Tonight, a leading expert in radioactive waste is warning that the fracking industry could be forced into a state of limbo because they won't be able to dispose of contaminated water. Radioactive water has already been discharged into the Manchester Ship Canal. The broadcaster and explorer Paul Rose has this exclusive report. This bridge in Salford marks the start of the Manchester Ship Canal, a waterway that would revolutionise the two cities, turning them into industrial giants of the 20th century. Now, the canal will be leaving an indelible mark in a new revolution, fracking and the dash for gas. This programme will be investigating why almost two million gallons of radioactive water produced by the fracking company Quadrilla was processed at a nearby water treatment works and then discharged quite legally into the canal. And we'll be asking, could it happen again? Priest Hall in Lancashire, a site operated by Quadrilla Resources, is so far the only well in the UK to have advanced from exploration for shale gas to the next phase, hydraulic fracturing. For some, homegrown shale gas offers a bonus and energy independence at just the right time. We've got to have affordable energy. For others, it's a misfortune leading to worries, from earthquakes and poisoning of the water table to fears about increased lorry traffic and harm to wildlife. No one wants fracking in the UK. No one wants it. But there is a proven danger that has yet to fully surface. Radiation. The implications of that radioactivity are so severe, according to some experts, that it could put the whole of the industry in this country into a state of limbo. Water is the lifeblood of fracking. Without huge amounts of it, engineers couldn't get the gas they seek. But that same process unlocks natural radioactive material. And it's the cleaning of that contaminated water which could become the industry's Achilles heel. Hydraulic fracturing, or fracking as it is known, is a process that happens 8,000 feet or two and a half kilometres down there. Bedrock is shattered to release methane gas. They drill straight, then horizontally. Water and chemicals are injected at high pressure to fracture the rock. Tiny grains like sand hold the fissures open. Molecules of gas are released and flushed back to the surface. And it's water which could be a problem for fracking companies. Flushed out fluid also contains radiation. At Priest Hall, the Environment Agency found traces of uranium and thorium. The levels of radium were 90 times higher than you'd find in drinking water. Now we don't want to be alarmist, this is not another Chernobyl in waiting. The radiation is low level. It's called NORM, naturally occurring radioactive material, and it's all around us in nature. But the fact remains, there is a danger. And because of that, when it comes to clearing up, fracking moves into a whole new realm. The Doonray Nuclear Research Facility in Scotland was opened in the mid-50s, but in recent years has been in the process of shutting down. Some wear protective clothing for they're in contact with radioactivity, the invisible enemy which can be lethal unless proper precautions are taken. Dr Trevor Jones from Bram Hall in Stockport has been involved in the Doonray cleanup project with a similar role at Sellafield. As one of the UK's first accredited radioactive waste advisors, he's legally recognised by regulators as an expert. I've come to the banks of a swollen river loon, deep in the picturesque forest of Boland, so he can help me understand this stuff called norm. Radioactivity is everywhere around us, uh, in the food we eat, in the, the rocks and the soil and the water. Um, this is shale, uh, this is an example of the Boland shale from which they're proposing to extract 
uh, shale gas underneath Lancashire. Um, and it also uh, contains concentrations of metals dissolved from the rock, uh, including some radioactive metals. Uh, the one, main one of interest in terms of shale gas and norm is uh, radium. And you can see if I put the detector up to it, you can probably hear oh, the yes. radioactivity count. It's going up to about 300 counts per second. So it's about three times the background radioactivity just from this natural exposure of shale. Oh, wow. So while we're standing here close to this shale, we're not, are we in any danger of, it, of absorbing too much radiation? No, the radiation that's coming off this is part of the normal background uh, radiation that we're exposed to all the time. The norm radiation only becomes a health issue if it gets into the body, and the most obvious route would be through water. So how much of this radioactive water was there? Well, this place might help us understand it a little bit better. This is the Manchester Aquatic Centre and one of the largest pools in the country. How much water? I'll show you. The diving pool holds two and a half thousand cubic metres of water. We know from the Environment Agency that 8,400 cubic metres of contaminated water was produced in Lancashire. So they could have filled this pool three times and had a bit left over. All of the water would have to be treated to neutralise the radioactivity. And that is just one well. Quadrilla don't know how many wells they might frack, but have estimated it might be as many as 800. And that will produce enough flowback water to fill nearly 2,700 of these pools. And that is just one company. A recent government report reckoned in the northwest that the total amount of contaminated water could be the equivalent of 5,000 pools like this. The same report estimated that fracking could account for about 3% of all the UK's annual wastewater, and that could place a substantial burden on the sewage infrastructure. Another report last month by the Chartered Institution of Water and Environmental Management indicated that treatment capacity should not represent a problem in the UK, a view shared by Quadrilla. Offshore oil and gas operators pump their contaminated flowback waters back into the North Sea, where the huge dilution renders it less dangerous. That option isn't open to onshore developers. Quadrilla stored some of the water in these tanks at Priest Hall. At the time, regulations classed it as industrial effluent. It was processed at the Davy Hume Wastewater Treatment Works in Trafford before being flushed into the ship canal. But there were warnings about health risks just a few months before that discharge, and they came from America. In Pennsylvania, there are more than 4,000 wells, producing millions of gallons of contaminated water. Some has been treated in public sewage works. In March 2011, the US Environmental Protection Agency wrote to the state of Pennsylvania, warning of dangers that radiation was posing to the public. And this is a copy of that letter, and it makes for worrying reading. The agency tells Pennsylvania, the wastewater contains variable and sometimes high concentrations of materials that may present a threat to human health and aquatic environment, including radionuclides. The letter says wastewater treatment facilities can't remove many of the substances, and high concentrations can impair the ability of treatment facilities to properly treat domestic sewage. It says it's critical to inform the public as to whether and at what levels radiation occurs in the water supply. Pennsylvania has launched an inquiry with a report due in April. Soon after the discharge into the canal, the regulations here did change. Flowback water is now classed as radioactive waste. 
The operator needs a permit, and so does the water treatment works. But the Environment Agency have told us that there are now no facilities in the northwest authorised to take it. The Environment Agency would not grant permits, radioactive substances permit, to the fracking company until they were satisfied that a disposal route was available for the wastes. They would not be simply allowed to, uh, to accumulate the waste in the hope or expectation that a disposal route would become available in the future. And where does that leave the industry? It means that significant investment will be required because suitable treatment technologies are not available off the shelf uh, and that will inevitably delay fracking operations. We've learned that a month ago Quadrilla withdrew the last of its applications for a radioactive substances permit from the Environment Agency. It may submit more in the future. Quadrilla told us, without one it can drill but not frack. Following recent changes in the Environment Agency's guidance on permits and an ongoing review of our exploration program, we have decided to withdraw the previous permit applications for our sites in Lancashire. We are preparing new permits and will provide further detail when we announce a number of proposed new exploration sites. We will need a radioactive substances permit to flow test any well after fracturing. Remsol, based in Preston, is a waste management company hired by Quadrilla. They may have a solution to the radiation. In trials, they say they've developed a technique which reduces the radioactivity by 90%, and they believe it can be scaled up for full production. In general terms, are you saying that your aim is to extract as much of the norm as possible from the water and convert that into a solid? Yeah, in essence, we're trying to extract those tiny suspended solids where we find the naturally occurring radioactive material and heavy metals and to lock them into a, into a solid format that can then be safely deposited at landfill sites that are authorised and permitted to receive and deal with non-hazardous waste. And in fact, once it's in that solid form, the presence of that naturally occurring radioactive material doesn't then render that material a radioactive waste for disposal purposes. The trials would still need to be proved for full-scale production. But if Remsol and Quadrilla can develop a safe treatment for the water, they'd still need to move it out of the northwest. Yeah. What's the difference between... They plan to use a fleet of tankers carrying bigger volumes than conventional vehicles and with more safety features. So the likelihood of any material escaping in the event of an accident is very, very limited. They estimate each well will need a total of about 114 tanker journeys. Government figures suggest many more than that. We've based our numbers on the fracture plans that we've, uh, we've seen from an operator. I think everybody else at this stage is, is basing their assumptions on anecdotal evidence and, and analogues from around the world, not necessarily from the UK. Fracking may or may not become a boom industry. The operators will only know what's down there by drilling many more exploratory wells. And if the gas is viable to extract, they'll be producing lots and lots of flowback water contaminated with radiation. And the only certainty we have now is that no one yet can guarantee how those sorts of volumes are going to be cleaned. <laughs>